There's a lot of second-hand Nissan Leafs in New Zealand. So in this episode, Andy, the EV specialist, is gonna take us for a walk around what's happening underneath. Today we're gonna have a look at the underside of a Nissan Leaf. There's a lot of these out there, uh, but probably not many of you have seen under, underneath them. Now this is a 2011 Nissan Leaf and it's, uh, it's developed in, uh, quite a, some time ago, so it has some quite basic features that are in common with vehicles today. As we go underneath, you'll see, you can see uh, the AC motor that is, does the, all the driving for it, coupled to the transmission, reduction gear transmission, single speed. Both drive shafts transverse, going out to the wheels like a standard automotive uh, sort of practice. But if you look up from underneath, which you can see, you can see orange cables, large orange cables. They uh, signify high voltage cables and they should be handled very carefully with only the main safety precautions if you're trained. As we move our way back, you can see the, this big thick cable, which is uh, a very protected cable for um, obvious reasons, so that if it's in a crash, it takes a lot of force to pierce them. Being 380 volts in the air, they can do a lot of damage. Looking at the battery pack is the front. This connector here has a safety lockout, but if it was to be disconnect by somebody who didn't know what they're doing. There is a special safety interlock that uh, locks and um, neutralizes the battery so you hopefully avoid being shot. The other cable underneath here, the wires, are the com communication um, wires that go to the various computers that are interlinked into this EV system. Passing through back here, uh, two coolant hoses liquid coolant hoses that are going to go to the rear to a part we'll talk about in a minute, the charger system. This cable here is another high voltage cable that goes from the onboard charger. Now, the battery is mounted on the underside of the chassis through 12 volts and is made for in the early days to be a quick change battery system. This battery is air-cooled, which is pretty primitive, but it's simple. Air-cooled, that's how Nissan have done their um, thing, and if it does overheat, they, the computer systems just reduce the output until the temperature becomes acceptable. Now, on all these electrical systems, they have these special earthing straps. They don't look like much, but those are their standard electrical practice is to protect anyone um, help protect anyone that if there is a short inside they provide a path for electricity to pass through into the body rather than through the human body. This battery unit is totally isolated inside from the electrical system of the normal car body so that um, the risk of being electrocuted by people is very very low. Even what was the on the underneath before you because you took off the bottom of the oh, yeah. Normally on the underside of the, the body are uh, these underside pa panels that improve the aerodynamics and protect it from the external um, contamination of dirt and water. On the underside, um, by having a smooth um, flow of air through underneath, it improves the fuel economy through better aerodynamics. They just screw off easily. Yeah. Yeah. They're screwed and clipped up underneath there. Yep. These battery packs are fully sealed from the external environment and uh, from the factory are tested, air tested for air tightness. And if you are to remove the battery and dismantle it, one of the procedures are to 
recheck that air tightness train using the vent located uh, on the battery pack. So once it is fully completely rebuilt, you do an airtight test to make sure that there's no leakage and the battery is fully sealed. So in cases where the water level gets um, quite high, we've been having quite a lot in New Zealand, I'd expect the battery packs to be quite well sealed from the um, flooding. Um, so it's quite a good feature with the current climate. Is there anything just uh, the basic consumer should be aware of if they say they're looking at buying one? Yeah, the, the, the main uh, problem is the age of the vehicles and, the, and not so much the condition of the vehicles but the battery age and they, all these vehicles of this age have low, uh, uh, lower in the uh, life, uh, lower in the capacity of the battery so that's the major thing which reduces the drive range and it makes the vehicles um, uh, not so easily uh, usable in everyday life. Okay, moving back, um, uh, this is possibly a site um, where damage could occur if it ran over anything. So that is a possible area of damage. And we'll keep on moving back here through to this Warning sign at the rear. That bit. Indicating the high voltage is inside. So um, manufacturers uh, always put that on all these things for uh, to protect the uh, general public as well as technicians. Coming through from the back is you can see the last bit of high voltage cabling, orange there, which just through there. Can oh, just, yep. I'm just oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Which is the wiring that goes to, this is the wiring that goes up to a unit just above, uh, just uh, vertically above here inside the cabin is a on vehicle charging controller. And these coolant hoses are uh, used to cool it down. That converts the AC from the the plug-in charger into DC to charge the battery. So when you plug your car into the AC source at the charging station, that AC, alternating current, is supplied into this onboard charger and that converts it to DC to charge the main traction battery. So that's basically it for the leaf. This, this area here is all still covered in underbody and then it comes to the, the uh, diffuser at the rear, just which helps integrate the under airflow with the other flow from the back of the vehicle, these di diverters to help it, its coefficient of drag. Yeah, is this the same on, is this basic layout the same as on the new model as well? Or? Yeah, it's all back. Yeah, the new one's all so similar, even that they're so similar underneath even though the body looks quite different, but the same air cooled. Okay, at the front of the vehicle, uh, we have the charge port area for Nissan Leafs. Um, uh, here is where the DC charge, fast charger goes in, and this is the AC uh, charge port. Now. These uh, should be serviced uh, frequently because of, is, if there's any contamination from moisture or dirt, they can bring about a fault in the uh, charging system and possibly cause it not to be charged. The charging system monitors any stray voltages that may uh, be potentially um, dangerous for uh, drivers and technicians. Uh, this is one area uh, where maintenance should be carried out. Now, a lot of people think there's no maintenance of electric vehicles, but actually there's still a lot of maintenance that should be carried out. The coolant should be changed uh, before it becomes um, ineffective and it actually can cause corrosion of the cooling system. That's um, around, around about seven years. Oh yeah, seven years, oh, that's all right. The battery, the, the uh, brake fluid, 
should be changed every two years because that can be uh, contaminated with water and that can have a major effect on the ABS system and other brake components. The 12 volt battery is another area, especially with leaves, that is uh, quite a high maintenance thing and they have to be maintained and replaced regularly. Inside the cabin is a cabin filter. Depending on the environment, how dusty it is, they have to be uh, replaced at, I think they're about 30,000 kilometers, but checked at 15. Because if you're living in an area of low dust, they would last a lot longer, or high pollen areas. Um, wiper blades have to be replaced. Um, headlight, uh, electrical system light bulbs um, replaced. And uh, brake pads, uh, brake pads uh, have to be replaced. Even though with the electric recharging they uh, wear a lot less, they still have to be uh, replaced in normal use, just like a normal one. Plus there are sus suspension components that can fail as well, they get wear is to keep them safe on the road. The LEAF system is an old system, basically an old technology. Um, that has been still in use, but uh, modern systems have more active cooling and um, drive features, stability control, that uh, making uh, electric vehicles safer and uh, giving them a higher drive range. And uh, there's more to be developed in the whole future of EVs. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to watch another one, there's one here. What are the chances of that? Uh, also, a subscribe to the channel would be great. And thanks again to Andy for his specialist EV knowledge.